Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live on Howard Street for The Cube, day four of Oracle, day three if you count Monday, but Sunday was day zero. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm my co-host Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.com. Our next guest is Praveen Ath... Praveen Athana. Did I get that right? Astana. Astana, got that right. And Mohammed Ashar, welcome back to theCUBE. Uh, Praveen, first question. You run the portfolio of the, of the private public cloud. Um, Larry announced a special announcement yesterday about the private cloud. Big, long name but you also have a private cloud solution. Can you just break down the nuance there? I want to dig into that, because you yeah. get a lot of buzz. One, the name, Larry named it, that was, that was key, but also it's specifically nuanced around this, the cloud, and you already have a private cloud. So yeah. can you take us through that? So here's, here's the way it works. Larry called it the private cloud appliance for uh, PaaS and IAS, and, and that's, uh, it's a very accurate and specific name. That's the one thing. You know exactly what you're getting with that name. So we already have a private cloud appliance that Oracle's been having for a number of years. And the difference is this. Our private cloud appliance is a general purpose appliance that anybody can use. It has uh, Linux, OpenStack, can run Windows, run multiple workloads. And you can expand it and run your private clouds with it. Yeah. The uh, fully elastic, fully elastic, yeah. Now the private cloud appliance for PaaS and IS just does just that. It's actually, let me describe it very well, and I'll just repeat it because I can't do better than that, which is, we took a slice of our public cloud and just put it inside a machine. That's what this appliance is. So we run the PaaS and IS uh, uh, services of the public cloud doesn't look the same. And let me have Mohammed elaborate on, on exactly what this machine does. Yeah, because the PaaS is a critical component yeah, of that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, with the private cloud machine for PaaS and yeah. IS, what we've done, as Praveen said, is really to package up what we have in the Oracle cloud. First of all, the infrastructure as a service, which is compute and storage. And then also the PaaS services. We have a very, very rich layer of PaaS services, 40 plus PaaS services that we announced at Open World. Uh, and actually previously we've been working on them, there are updates to them, et cetera. So we've taken both of those solutions, which is the IaaS and the PaaS from the public cloud and packaged them up for consumption on premise. And that's pretty revolutionary thing. So whether you're running Java applications, whether you're running Python applications, whether you're running Tomcat applications, whether you're running JBoss applications, whether you're doing an integration, all of the past capabilities that we've been talking about available and packaged up on premise. Absolutely, that's the goal, as well as the infrastructure as a service. So you get access to cloud innovation directly from Oracle Cloud into your data yeah, but, center. And, but I'm not buying a box. I'm, I'm, I'm renting We can talk services, a little bit about right? that. So obviously <laughs> one of the things customers have asked us, and we can talk a little bit about the use cases and why people have actually yeah, been asking for this, because they have. But um, one of the things that customers like is the cloud-like experience. So every customer I've talked to at Open World, whether it's a bank, whether it's a telco, whether it's a government mm -hmm. office, they like the idea of getting access to cloud innovation. They see a lot of innovation in the cloud, but they would like that packaged up on their premises because of geographical restrictions, because of compliance reasons, mm -hmm. because of control. A lot of the banks are not comfortable yet with putting things in the, putting everything certainly in the public cloud, and yeah. for some things they really want to keep them um, on premises. So for that reason, we, we really launched this product, and of course people ask, well, how are you going to offer it, and we're going to give people the option, but you can have it operated by Oracle as a service. The yeah. same way you have with the cloud. You go in through a web page and you get cloud. It just reminds me of the old extranet days. I mean, it's how you slice things. It's all on the semantics. I mean, if a customer wants yes. to have cloud, yeah. it's all about the consumption. It has nothing to do about the box. Exactly. It's all about the consumption. In fact, in fact uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a saying, right? What is cloud? It's running it on someone else's server. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not some magical thing. It's, it's a server, someone else's server. All we are saying is, hey, where should it matter where that server sits as long as you have a cloud-like experience? So the, the, the business model of cloud, the how the consumption is, obviously yeah. defines cloud, but also interesting about the stack. So one of the things we love about cloud is self-service, integrated stack, and a lot of 
magic happens. So scaling, talk about that, because Amazon has shown that integrated stacks work. People like to use some building blocks and then build on it. You mentioned OpenStack, yeah. Node.js was mentioned in the keynote, very popular, Docker containers. Yeah. This is the cloud native culture. So as long as you offer that and you have the consumption of cloud, that takes away the whole, where does it sit equation. Precisely. If it's some geopolitical or some you know, compliance thing, that's a different factor. But yeah. to be cloud native, that's got to be very, very flexible. Yeah. So that's a real developer-centric piece yeah. on the tech side. Yeah. So exactly. we've talked about the consumption. What is the developer angle on this? Yeah, that's absolutely. really big. Yeah, absolutely, it's huge. I mean, we actually do both audiences. Remember, a lot of customers have significant investments in things like WebLogic. I mean, it's predominantly used around the world, number yeah. one app server. So we provide a Java cloud service on-premise that gives you all the automation around installation, configuration, scaling, backup, patching, et cetera, as well as the brand new multi-tenancy capability we announced in WebLogic. So we have that within Java cloud service and we bring that on-premise. Now, people want to develop cloud native infrastructure. So we have something called the application container cloud service. And I think you saw it yesterday, which has Node, we have Python and Java SC and various other runtimes, and that gives people the ability to develop cloud native apps. You can define auto scaling rules, you can define a number of policies, and you drop your app in, and it gets distributed and scaled out to all of the infrastructure. And it's exactly the same, whether it's in the, your data center, or whether it's and in the And I have the choice, cloud. you said, of doing it as a service or on prem. So if, 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 if a flash drive fries, I have the option of saying, you guys fix it. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Or, just just or, like the cloud. Or, so, and I can pay you to do that, or I can do it myself. Absolutely, yeah. So, so one of the important things about what we're doing, and this is really important when you're talking about production, is to have the same operational model between the public cloud and the, the on-premises private cloud. And that's very important because what I've found in talking to customers is the operational model is where things break. If I have to do a certain way on premises, then I got to change and learn something new to do it in the public cloud, it's very difficult. Either I need two different people, or I got to learn a whole new way of doing things. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, learning two languages, you don't do it. So we maintain the same operational model on premises as well as in the public cloud. That's a key important So point. let's talk about why that's so important and why it's different. So when Amazon came out with the, you know, the first cloud, everybody noted, wow, it's homogeneous. So if we could get homogeneity throughout, we could have this notion of hybrid, on, off, whatever. And nobody ever got there. Um, you're there, you're finally. Exactly, yeah. Right? So I mean, Amazon actually never got there. They right, never right, Amazon has no interest yeah. in getting there. Yeah. They want so, everything swept into the right. and, public and, cloud. And uh, uh, we have definitely done that because we have, as, as Mohammed said, listened to our customers and we provide a variety of, of options to our customers. That's the key thing here. It's for those customers who want just that private cloud experience, we have the, P, the private cloud appliance, PCA, where they can run OpenStack, Windows, all that stuff, multiple workloads. For those customers who want to do, you know, extend their middleware into PaaS uh, and have it integrated with IaaS, that's an important point. We, ca we call ourselves the integrated cloud. The PaaS and IaaS integrated together. That's what we offer this, this uh, private cloud appliance for IaaS and PaaS. And it, you know, same operational model up and down. So you think about all the things that Oracle does, let's call it N, um, N being everything you guys do, on-prem. And the strategy is N on-prem will be the same N in the cloud. That's the strategy, correct? That's the strategy, What yeah. percent of N is available in the cloud today? Is it 50% of N, 40% of N? So we're actually, so if I can paraphrase your question, right? Obviously packaging up all the goodies and all yeah. the innovations in public cloud and putting them into this private cloud machine is multi-year exercise. Right. It's a continuous exercise, remember, because yeah. there are regular updates that go to the public cloud. There are new solutions that get rolled out. So we have a pretty phased approach. So what we're doing is, is we're going to launch the actual service offering, which is the infrastructure as a service offering. Java Cloud Service, which everybody uses with goodies like WebLogic multi-tenancy, as well as our integration cloud service, because everybody needs integration, because they have lots of different things. And then we're going to onboard, for example, the application container cloud service, which we've had a lot of requests from customers for, and a number of other cloud services as well. So there's a very regular cadence to onboard all of these things very rapidly. And, and, and I, I mean, at some point, it's like everybody says mobile first. Are you at the cloud first, you know, development stage, your mentality? What's the in internal, you know, DNA like? I think, I think that's what we do. Cloud native is the way we think about it, yeah. not location. So cloud native means I'm developing for an elastic infrastructure. 
That's really what cloud native uh, ultimately is. And so you can develop it for the cloud. M many customers actually would have run it on premises after they developed it in the cloud. And so we offer that. Yeah. I think one of the key differences we have compared to all, our, all the other players in the industry is A, the breadth of our portfolio, B, the real understanding of being cloud native everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, and having consistency between the on-premises and off-premises stuff. So it's the same thing. There's, there's no one else I know that can provide all of that. Now, some companies have tried to put appliances on premises that are similar to what they have in the public cloud. They quickly go out of date. They don't have the same code. Our, our, our appliances maintain the same code. How big is the code. appliance? So the appliance will, will range. You, know, you can start it with, I think... Uh, um, you can start it with no. fixed configurations, right? But it's basically yeah. rack-based, so you can start with... You know, it could be a super rack. cluster, I mean, depending on, depending yeah, on what yeah, the needs there's are, There's right? a specific hardware profile, because remember, what we're trying to do is make sure we give you exactly the same thing. That's our commitment. It kind of depends per customer. Soft, no, it doesn't depend oh, per okay. customer. From a software perspective, which is IaaS and PaaS, as public cloud. Our commitment is to stay as true to what we do yeah. in the public cloud as possible. And there we're using x86 servers. Mm -hmm. So we're using x86 servers here within the I was the just thinking from a footprint standpoint, like, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Do I put yeah. it in a telephone closet, a small yeah. telephone it's, it's closet, or is it going to be, do it, I need a modern right. data do, center? It can do it, it'll grow as you grow. Okay. So you can start with, you know, a quarter rack or half rack, and then just keep so going I have to, to multiple plan my racks. facilities based upon what I'm doing. So with it's exactly. like you said, me. so it's the diversity of offerings, uh, it's the homogeneity, the, the, the exact, and it's not a financial gimmick. No. A lot of guys do financial give put a box in and we'll, yeah. we'll put extra capacity in there and we'll, whatever. But it's, 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 it's financial engineering. This is true this radical is true. service. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. You saw, you saw a very important point here I want to uh, make actually is you saw the demo that, uh, that uh, Larry did about portability of workloads from on-premises to off-premises with a single click. That yeah. is critical. So because we have the same software and hardware on premises and, and, and in the in our public cloud, you can easily move workloads, some of them while they're even running. So what does that mean? That means that we can offer true bursting compared to a lot of people who bursting is a PowerPoint word a word on a PowerPoint slide. Right? It's so well, hard to they do. They can technically to... burst, but they have to have someone on the other side to burst That's too. Right. That has to be configured. Well, they, <laughs> can, they, they can technically the burst, to except it may burst. Yeah, yeah, bursting, right. to know, <laughs> bursting to nowhere. So, so talk, talk more about, give us an example of how somebody would use that in, in a real so, world. So situation. there's a couple of examples. One is, hey, you, you've gotten a certain amount of infrastructure on your yeah. premises, and then you say, hey, my demand is exceeding my infrastructure. Well, I can now move it to the Oracle Public Cloud while it's running. Without buying a box. Without buying a box and have it scale as much as I need to handle an unexpected load, right? Or disaster recovery, or, you know, I, I really want to be able to connect with other applications I have in the cloud. You know, in this world of ours where you have mobile, social, everything, you may want to connect with something in the cloud to make a, a, a new campaign or CRM thing happen. So you can just move it up there and do that connection. So and bring it back. Praveen and Mohammed, I want to ask you a question on this particular point. We're a big, we're an Amazon customer. Maybe we should look at Oracle um, now that you have the cloud. There's a lot of SMBs like the cloud. Oracle, in fact, Amazon's customer base, majority of you know, mid-sized companies. And then a couple yeah. of big whales in there, yeah. Netflix and whatnot. But the issue is, I need to have elasticity. So I mean, so I never elastic means to me is, okay, I'm running my crowd chat service, we have EC2, we got S3, we got auto scaling, elastic means talk, Redis, all this stuff, cool stuff, integrated stack. But if I have a all of a sudden hundred thousand people hit my site, I got auto scaling built in. Yeah. So I know because I think they get a lot of servers, yeah. they can spin up and manage that load. Yeah. How you address that concern on the deployment side yeah. of the box? Are there <laughs> the cores inside? Is it the engineered yeah. system? Yeah. I mean, you have to have some horsepower yeah, yeah, absolutely. that meet a minimum kind of like threshold of what auto scaling means. Yeah, absolutely. There's a couple of things. Firstly, in our public cloud, we have that capability, I get that. by the way. So we yeah. have that all built in. I, it's like I, tremendous. I can see that. Heterogeneous infrastructure. You can run our solutions. You can run open source solutions. Yeah. You can run kind of basically anything you want. The, on the private side, so that's really around A, offering a service, and then being, giving you capacity that you can burst to internally within the frame itself, right? That's really the notion. Yeah. Now, if I, at the moment, I need like maybe half a frame, and then I need 47 frames, then clearly there's some limitations, because you never told us you might need to burst to 47 frames. Yeah. But, you but you the could reality burst, is... You could burst to the public So cloud. I have to place, yeah. do, some, exactly. do some capacity planning on that. A little bit of capacity but planning the will be required. I also buy you. How many cores are in that? Just the box, the M7's got how many cores in it? I mean, it's got... 
Hello, um, big time. Of course, course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. zillion cores. But, but, so. but you know, actually, so there's a couple of things here. First of all, most customers I've spoken with, you know, they don't have 500% like yeah. spikes. You know, there may be like 50%, 100% spike, and and then you can do some planning. You can do our portability for that sort of thing, right? But one of the big differences between, because you brought up Amazon, uh, and uh, one of the big differences between what we are doing at Oracle and what Amazon has been doing is, we are really gearing towards mission critical. Yeah. Right. Everything runs on Oracle. You know, landing That's gears true. are always 100% of the time have to be deployed. You know, um, ambulances that always have to be dispatched. Mission critical runs on Oracle. Oh, okay. And, and that's, so really the that's what we want to okay, do. Okay, so I've been, I've been yeah, on this okay. for a while. So <laughs> you, I'll ask you. I won't tell you. I'll ask you. Yeah, Can you run mission in critical Oracle in Amazon? If you do all the work necessary to yeah. do it, because they don't give you the SLA, right? So you go to build a high availability in there, you go to build the storage. So it's right, a science project. It can be done, but it's, it's a science project. That's yeah. why okay. we believe that our cloud provides the exactly right. So it is possible. It is possible. It's just hard. Yes. Okay. Very hard. Right, and I've been saying, I've been saying, saying you can't do it. Nobody's doing it. You can do it, you but can, nobody's doing it. You can absolutely can do it. Yeah. yeah and I mean, Amazon is a partner of ours. Yes, but you need specialized so. hardware to do it. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's Mohammed. A lot of elbow grease and knowledge. That's exactly yeah. right. Uh, okay. A lot of okay, so it's technic that's anything's technically possible. Yes. So that's, you know, yes. But, yeah, but, remember, even yeah. like the showcase, which is people like Netflix, right? Yeah. Where the showcase, on, well, guess what? They've had outages, right? And they've architected things beautifully, which means if you, yeah. you know, yeah. if you're yeah. anybody else, you're going to have even more problems. So we inside. really designed our cloud for that, for many of the customers out there who are Oracle customers, as well as non-Oracle customers who demand a certain level of SLA, yeah. business critical applications, they run their business. And they say, hey, I want to have access to all this innovation in the cloud, but hey, but I'm running my core banking, and I'd like IAS, and I like the abstraction provided, but I like it on premise. Yeah. Can you do something it for makes me? Total and that's really sense. where it, we come in. It makes total sense for Oracle. Sweet so spot. I, I got to ask the cloud native question. You mentioned mission critical. Obviously, Oracle, they run some uh, critical infrastructure and critical apps as well, so I get that. So now for the DevOps equation, back to, because right. you, know, you look at some of the machines you're offering here, I mean, it makes DevOps easier, infrastructure as code, yeah. which is something that we always talk about. Yeah. That is more of a free form developer, you talk about Docker, yeah. well, you know, exactly. that's the yeah. developer environment. Yeah. So there's some experimentation going on in the cloud. So in, as you move into mission critical, what does DevOps mean for mission critical? Because uh, it's an operational stable. Yeah. No one's going to let the devs get access to, maybe, maybe they will. So how do you define cloud native with mission critical with the need to program infrastructure as code? So look, I think the, the biggest point about this is that I think it's, it's a good thing moving from to a continuous delivery, continuous integration uh, mentality, right? Because A, it makes sense because you, 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 your whole organization gets used to this concept of delivering things. And of course, what you mentioned, which is, hey, infrastructure code, because the data center is becoming programmable, yep. so that code that is the programs can then be part of this yep. continuous delivery, continuous integration architecture. Our goal is very simple. We want to give you cloud native infrastructure so you can have your choice of C, CI or CD infrastructure. We have that built in. We have something called the uh, developer cloud service where that, that, that does actually do it for you. And it's programmable. Is, yeah, and it's programmable. And you actually put your assets in there. You have the integration, the delivery. So it gives you a great mechanism by which you can actually manage that. But hey, if you want, if you got your own CI infrastructure, you can use that on our cloud. You can use it on the private cloud machine for Paz and IS. All right, guys, we got to get the wrap, and I want to get your final word. What's your thoughts on Oracle Open World this year? Obviously, this is a hot area. You're in the lion's den, if you will. It's very competitive, pass space, yeah. middleware, database, all in the center of the action. So, I, I'm new at Oracle. I've been here two months. Right? And, <laughs> Welcome and, to the and lion's I can, den. And I, can, and, I, and I can tell you something. I mean, it's stunning. As someone who just come in, the stunning how much technology we have and how we listen to the customers and take care of their business needs. Yeah. Yeah. And everything we're doing is just doing just that. Awesome. Mohammed, final thoughts? Yeah. And I think that on this particular topic of the private cloud machine for Paz and I, as every customer meeting I've been with, whether it's a bank or a telco or a smaller customer, they love getting innovation from cloud, yeah. from premise. So from my perspective, it's great. Yeah. Remember, I'm always locked up downstairs <laughs> in customer meetings, so that's about as much as I can tell you. Praveen, you're new, so I got to ask you a question. Every company has some sort of cadence, Moore's Laws, Intel, you know, go faster, smaller, faster, cheaper. That's kind of their culture. What's the Oracle culture like? When you come in, you got fresh eyes here. What's the cadence? What's that unique thing at Oracle that makes it a unique uh, culture? Uh, 
I mean, for me, just what I've learned, it's, it's really solving the business needs for the customer. I mean, I don't see any company that does it as well as Oracle does. All and right. that's what drives everyone. It isn't about, hey, we have some cool technology, now how should we use it? It's, here's a customer problem, how do we go fix it? All right. Praveen Mahan, thanks for joining us. We're on theCUBE, we're breaking down the, the, the events here. We're on the last final leg of the three and a half days of CUBE coverage, four days, we'll be right back after this short break. This is SiliconANGLE's theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.